Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we're going to do another motherboard preview. This is going to be the Z890 Aorus Pro Ice. You can also get a black edition as well. A little bit of a bump in spec over the Elite 7 that we looked at previously. You can also get that one in white as well, so just worth noting if you're looking for a bit more of a cheaper board. This one's going to be around 389 certainly at the upper end of the market, but it does have quite a lot of features to go with it, so there are some cheaper ones should you need something a little bit more affordable. So let's get into this one. Of course, LGA 1851, so Core Ultra Series processors. No support for 1700 anymore, I'm afraid. So we've also got a little bit of filler box there. We'll take the motherboard out and look underneath first. So not too much going on. We've got a few probes for temperature. There's also the little cable that will listen for noise and help produce any sounds. Oh, additional fan, that's something we haven't seen yet. Uh, that just looks to be a little four pin one. Typically, you don't need to use those little fans unless you're really pushing your component. So for most people, I don't think you'll need to add that on. We then have a couple of SATA cables, one of which is right angled, all lovely and white. And we have the quick connects for the front panel, a bit of documentation, some stickers. They're quite like a vapor wave kind of effect, quite nice. And then we have got our Wi-Fi antenna, which is all white as well to match the theme. Lastly, just miss this one, a little four pin extension. So bringing in the Pro Ice, quite a chunky board, a little bit more beefy than the Elite 7, like we saw the X870E as well. That was also very beefed up. This part on the left-hand side will have some RGB to it. On the box, there's a nice little picture on how that will display. Actually does look very nice and vibrant. I'm looking forward to sticking this in the build and seeing how it looks. Just zooming in there to our VRM. This has got a digital twin 16 plus one plus two stage VRM, but I'm sure you could power some higher end processors like the Ultra 9, for example, with this without any problems. Let's have a look around the back as well. Fairly standard. We have got the reinforcement for the PCIe slot, but otherwise just a little bit of silk screening. That's good though, because it does save you money and you're not paying for something you won't see in the case anyway. So let's have a look around the board. Firstly, we have a little four pin header that's cheekily tucked away there. That's our first four pin. Then have our two eight pin EPS connectors, not shielded, but they are solid pins. Then have another two four pin headers to the right of that, CPU optional and CPU fan. Then a three pin five volt addressable RGB connector. Then have a power up reset button, also a Q flash plus. Very handy buttons to have if you're bench testing. We've got a 24 pin for power. We've also got two four pin pump headers. There's also the two pin for the temperatures as well, if you're gonna go for a custom loop. Then have our type C connector. It's going to be 20 gigabits per second. On the right angle, we have got an HDMI port. So if you're going to have a little screen in your case, you can easily connect straight to the motherboard or don't have to go around the back of the case and wire it like that. We've also got a USB 3 type A port. It's going to be five gigabits per second. Then four SATA six gigabit ports. We've got a front panel on the bottom right. Then we have an additional three four pin headers. We have two USB 2 headers. So great for anything like RGB controllers and fan controllers and things like that. We then have a standard 12 volt RGB connector and then two more five volt addressable three pins. And then we have our front panel audio on the left hand side. This is using a Realtek ALC 1220 codec, but like I've said to a lot of people in the comments that say it's not that great, I just highly recommend you get a sound card. It's so much better and you won't look back. So going back up to our socket, LGA 1851. So the new CPUs, we won't unfortunately have any support for LGA 1700 here. Then to the right of those, we have our dim slots that are armored also on slots two and four, nice little touch. This will support up to 256 gigabytes of DDR5 at the current time of filming anyway. You might see it push with the BIOS update and then up to 9,500 mega transfers per second on XMP. You can, of course, push it higher if you want to by doing it manually. So going down to our storage and expansion slots, the top slot here is a heat sink with the easy latch click. So that's just a little quick release heat sink. Nice piece of aluminium or aluminium and 110 mm thermal pad, so you can support a Gen 5 110 mm drive. We've also got the Easy Latch Plus on there as well to easily install that. Then we have some more slots underneath this little piece of metal again, a quick release, and then an additional four NVMe slots underneath there. You can do two 110 mm and two 80 mm. All those additional drives will be running at Gen 4 speed, so you can do two on the chipset and two on the CPU. So that panel then just goes in and clips down again with a nice quick release. Then we have an additional two PCIe X16 Gen 4 lanes below that. These are running off the chipset. The top one is running at X4, then the bottom one's running at X1. So not the fastest in the world, but certainly good enough for a capture card, sound card, or maybe a network card. Onto the rear IO, at the very top, we have got four USB 2 ports. The blue USB ports, there's four of those. 
These are going to be USB 3.2 Gen 1, so 5 gigabits per second. We then have the two red USB ports. These are 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabits per second. We then have the Type-C Thunderbolt 4 headers. There's two of those. We have our 5 gig Ethernet. Great if you've got a home server or NAS, you can make use of that. Then we have got our Wi-Fi Quick Connect at the bottom there. This has Wi-Fi 7 and also Bluetooth 5.4. And finally at the bottom, we've got a line-out microphone and then an SP diff. So that was a look at the Aorus Z890 Pro Ice. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box below. I have got a Y70 black and white case from Height that needs a board. So maybe we could use this for that. And then also give you some performance and stuff as well. Better show you that all lit up would look quite nice. Let me know what you think about that. What kind of spec would you like to see with it as well? I think the Ultra 7 would go quite well with this. That could match up quite nicely. I'll also add the links in the description box when this is available as well. But for now, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and ding the bell. We've got lots to come up on the channel. Uh, that's launched off aside. There's just so much planned. Um, so lots to look forward to. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to Aura to send this out for me to look at. I'll see you all in the next one.